I'm Diane Hazel and I grew up in this house next to Shustoke Reservoir. My father and mother originally, when they moved over here from Birmingham, moved into a tied house in Forge Road, number one Forge Road. And then my father, the one day, who worked for Birmingham Water Department at the time, was a foreman water mainsler. He saw this house and said he told said my mother to my mother Pam at the time, oh, I've found the house of my dreams. And he couldn't believe that the people that lived here said it was too isolated and they wanted to move. And somehow there was a three-way swap done and they moved in here. As his name, real name was Charles Ivor Keith. But he used to be hated the name, so he used to call himself Joe. And everyone knew him as Joe, but they didn't realise what his real name was because he really did hate the <laughs> his real name. My dad used to be the relief bailiff here, covered for Mr Freeman when he wasn't uh, working, had days off, and he used to do whole weekends and evenings. Sort of uh, quite difficult because he had to weigh in fish and make sure the fishermen took the quota and didn't over uh, take what they should and uh, police things generally and stop trespassers and all that. But it was, uh, it, was, it was fun times, I think, and I think he thoroughly enjoyed it, but um, it was long, long days because they were allowed out an hour after sunset, so he used to be here till oh, nearly midnight some nights in the, in the summer. And it was, it was, I think he really enjoyed it more than his actual job. He used to ride his bike, cause, or he had a small moped in later days, which was quite useful, but he used to, if it rained and he had to come down and open floodgates, this, that and the other, it didn't matter what time of night it was, it was on his bike, you know, so he used to uh, be out and about sometimes most of the night up and down checking water levels if we had heavy rain, but, uh, and the water gauge was down here for the amount of rain, so he used to have to check the rain gauge every morning and um, make sure, you know, see how much rain we'd had and he'd have to write it in a book and all that, but it was quite technical. But he, I think he enjoyed it, to be honest. He used to like the company. But so we did know the fishermen very well, and our, our father was uh, used to hear that the, we hadn't spoken to someone, we used to get into trouble. <laughs> because he was like, oh, your daughter snubbed us or something. But there was one old man there that used to think we were all boys. Because in his day, he was a major, he was a major of some sort. In their days, only boys rode. So we used to be on the horses and we had very short hair. And he used to say to our father, it didn't matter how often he told him we were girls, all oh, them boys of yours, wonderful, wonderful riders like this. It was very funny. Occasionally they'd dredge the pool. It used to be very noisy business and they'd have massive nets in the pool to take the course fishing out. We were never sure whether they got anything or not. But then they used to take it to the local rivers for the course fishermen to uh, fish over winter. But see, they never did it until late October when the thing was finished. But... We used to see them, we did actually see a, a poor small grebe go down and never come back up and we assumed that was either a very large pike or a very large trout, but it disappeared for good the one day. Well, this, when it was actually the tumbling vase, as it was before they put this construction in, uh, had shingle banks and little pools at the side, and we used to come down the path here on our ponies on a hot day, and they'd, they'd have a paddle, and we'd have a paddle. And The ponies particularly used to like it, and uh, my pony used to scrape the water up and absolutely loved it. I mean, we spent hours down here, and we used to have so many adventures. You know, we used to go fishing, with a pair of tights on a bamboo pole and, and a coat hanger and used to get bullheads, the little bullheads that look like catfish and minnows and sticklebacks, but we always put them back. But we used to ice over in the winter and we used to skate on it. I, I think it was an idyllic place for any child, really. I mean, there was water voles and a lot of other things, badgers and stoats and weasels. And we used to see all this sort of thing that you don't see now. But I say it's just a shame they've let it go to to like how wild it is now.
One of his jobs was to keep the screens clean where the water flowed into the reservoir because obviously you see it clogged and then the water would rise and it would cause problems. Obviously when it rained really heavily day or night he would have to get up and come out and check the screens were clear and obviously this wasn't uh, all covered and electric. You had to stand on a very small wall to earn a, and a rake and a, probably a torch. And then you would have to, if it was too high, you had to shut it out of hit the reservoir. Oh, sorry, the reservoir. And then you'd have to go down to the other end of the pool and open the tumbling bay gates to let the water go. Otherwise, furnace end would flood. And then at some point, you'd have to keep an eye on it and not let it get too low because you were in trouble if it did. And then you'd shut the gates, let it build up, and then come back up here, check the screens again, and then let it into the reservoir where hopefully it would settle because it's clay, it was orange, it was always orange, it was. And this is why the pool's been emptied twice and dragged twice to take the silt out that builds up in the pool. It was a, his only real hobby was gardening. He was a mad, a mad gardener and he used to be so, if you put a footprint on his soil, he'd go mad and he grew tomatoes. We were quite self-sufficient. We used to grow vegetables and clamp them all winter and have the horses here as well and hay bales everywhere over there and over on the bank over there covered over over winter and uh, there was lots of poaching and part of my father's job as well as being a water bailiff was to try and discourage poachers but we did wake up in, when we were teenagers the one morning to find that uh, they'd put tyres down the side of the boathouse which stood there and uh, got the boats out and the boats were I assume they'd been using them to net the fish and they left the boats floating and it was such a worry to wake up in the morning and realise that while we were asleep there were people actually outside your house you know, involved in poaching but you wouldn't wouldn't leave the house at night on, the, on your own because it was there was quite a few about and, and in the woods poaching uh, animals uh, you know like uh, rabbits and stuff and so you wouldn't you wouldn't walk around in the dark out here idyllic or not at night there was people out here you really didn't want to meet but it was it's, it is an idyllic spot and looking at it today it's it's bring back so many memories there's even a dragonfly we moved away in 1985 but we still visit quite frequently because we have such fond memories of the place and to come back brings all those lovely memories back of how beautiful it was then and beautiful it is now.